Hi there, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk's going to be on adrenal fatigue. And to keep it real simple, there's three major phases of adrenal fatigue. And again, before we go into the exact phases, let's talk about your cortisol rhythm. So your cortisol rhythm is basically um, how your cortisol fluctuates throughout the day. So you can see cortisol is highest in the morning because that's there to give you energy so you can get up out of bed and, and go and attack the day, if you will. And then it drops throughout the day, especially at night, so you can rest and repair. And cortisol and melatonin have an inverse relationship. So as cortisol drops here, you would see melatonin come up here so you can rest and go to sleep. So cortisol is highest in the morning and lowest at night. And when we're looking at phase one, phase two, uh, phase three adrenal fatigue, we're looking at the variations of it. So stage one, cortisol is high. Stage two, cortisol is somewhere in between or back and forth. And stage three, there's typically a flattening of cortisol. So one more time, we have our typical pattern, high in the morning, dropping. We have our fatigue pattern. This is somewhere around stage two where we're in between. And then we have stage three, which again is going to be relatively a flat line. The only thing we're missing here is stage one. And we're going to break that down one by one and actually show you some real patient labs of how that actually looks. So one more time here, again, when we go over the actual slides, what you're going to see is a cortisol sum. So not the morning, noon, afternoon, nighttime samples, but this is how much cortisol you'd be making in the whole day. So if we took a sample here, 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 and here and added it up one whole day, that's what a whole day would look like. So you can see in the normal range, we're in the mid-30s or so for cortisol. When we go into stage one, our cortisol is hyper, right? So we're jumping off the side of the fence. Then we're coming down from that fence here in stage two. The only difference between stage two and, and normal is the rhythm. So we could be in stage two, but be high, low, high, low, and the highs and lows will average out to normal, where in normal, we have that nice, gentle taper. And I'll try to show you some labs so you can actually visualize that. And again, with stage three, we're dropping beneath that 23 units of cortisol marker. That's what delineates stage two and stage three. Also, we'll see lower DHEA as well. So let's go on to some actual patient labs here. Well, real quick, let's go over the hormone cascade before we do that. So all hormones come from cholesterol, and you can see really important that we eat the right thing so we can make our hormones. We see our stress hormones here in red, our female hormones in pink, and our androgen hormones in blue. When we have stress, that's going to hypersecrete our cortisol. This is typically where stage one occurs. If we keep that up, eventually we start dropping our androgen levels, so we have a hard time reproducing, harder hormonal issues. As this drops out, we go from stage two to stage three at the very end. And I'll show you some labs so you can actually visualize how that looks. Again, our goal is to remove the stressors so we can bring the hormones back into balance. So here's a stage one's lab. So you can see here with stage one, here's the high normal, here's the low normal, and the patient's high across the board. So you can see high cortisol in the morning, high in the afternoon, and you can see our sum, we're well above 42 units of cortisol. So you can see we're at significant high level there. DHEA is pretty good, but cortisol is high. And the, the high cortisol is going to cause HPA access dysfunction. I'm going to do a separate video on that. Stay tuned afterwards. Because again, it's not just about the gland strength, whether the gland's strong or weak. It's about how the brain talks to the gland. And we're going to go over that in the next video. But you can see this is your typical stage one adrenal fatigue, high amount of cortisol. DHEA is pretty good. This type of person actually feels pretty good as well, maybe a little bit tired but wired, maybe have some anxiety, maybe have some harder times resting and relaxing, but typical stage one patients feel a lot better than stage three for sure. And you can see their rhythm is instead of being here, they're high, they're high, and then they drop back in line. So high, high, normal, normal. So we can see that rhythm is a little bit off, which is a sign of HPA access dysfunction. Here's a stage two patient. You can see here, cortisol's between 23 and 42. We starting to have some rhythm issues. So one rhythm is off. So that noon to afternoon rhythm is off. So you can see here's morning, here's noon, here's afternoon, dropping out a little bit. And you can even see there are mornings and noons, even though they're in the normal range, they're at the low end of the normal. So you can see they're sitting right on stage two. DHEA is pretty good in this patient. But again, their cortisol, really it really screams that they're a stage two. 
you can see here the rhythm is normal, normal, low, normal, just to give you an idea what we're looking at. And then here's a stage three patient. So you can see cortisol in the morning, flat, cortisol at noon, flat, afternoon, relatively flat, and then at nighttime, finally it's normal. So if we go back here, it's basically very close to being a flat line. So we don't have that nice taper. So this is a, another big sign of HPA access dysfunction. And you can see here on the labs, that's like being down here, low, 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 and low. Again, the take home message here is there's three types of adrenal fatigue, and it's not just the gland fatiguing, it's the brain and the communication from the brain down to the adrenals is really what's getting disrupted. And again, you're going to know if you have adrenal fatigue off the back symptom wise. Again, I always recommend getting tested so you can figure out exactly what rhythms, what's off, so then we can apply more fine-tuned protocols to get you better. But again, if you have fatigue, weight gain, depression, digestive issues, mood issues, if you're constantly feeling tired, if your thyroid isn't working right, typically there's a thyroid adrenal connection. So if you have any of those symptoms, you're going to be a great candidate to get your adrenals tested. And for more great information from myself, check below the video. I have some great video series as well as some ways that you can get in contact with me. And next up on this series, we're going to talk about the HPA access dysfunction part of the whole entire adrenal fatigue sequelae. Again, for more videos, stay tuned.